the real question is where do we see the opportunity today? Today is probably one of the most attractive real estate investment environments we've seen in the last decade. Real estate generally performs better in high inflationary environment, and we've seen this resilience through downturns. So Brookfield is one of the largest global alternative asset managers with 850 billion of assets under management. Or the way I describe Brookfield is we are an owner and operator of real assets and businesses that are the backbone of the economy. So think about your journey to the conference today. When you turned on your lights this morning, that power could have been generated by a Brookfield renewable asset. Um, when you drove here, it could have been on a toll road. Uh, a typical investment that, that Brookfield would invest in. Um, it could have been in a car that had batteries power, uh, that came from one of Brookfield's private equity portfolio companies. And we're sitting here in this fantastic um, hotel, and it's an example of the type of assets we like to invest in. Brookfield has a reputation of being a office landlord, um, but we're so much more than that. We have a large exposure to housing, we're one of the largest logistics uh, developers and owners globally. We have 41,000 hotel keys in addition to being a large office owner and retail um, owner. And so I, we talk a lot about our investment philosophy. It's actually very simple. Our strategy is to invest in high quality assets for the long term. We've been doing this successfully for a long time and it has proven to work well for us and our investors through the investment cycle. Why do we focus on quality? High quality assets have lasting power in markets. We, we'd like to say good things happen to good real estate. And it's absolutely true through cycles. And we see this over and over again. When we do make a decision to invest, we continuously invest in those assets to maintain their, their market position. And when we are investing, we're seeking value. Typically, that can come in, in many ways. One is when assets are, are out of favor. Um, we'll typically take a contrarian view on when to invest. Um, in other times, like today's market, there's an opportunity to buy in distressed situations where there's really nothing wrong with the assets themselves, but they have a broken capital structure. So the real question is, where do we see the opportunity today? Today is probably one of the most attractive real estate investment environments we've seen in the last decade. Some of the best investments we have made have been in times of disruption and dislocation. We've been investing in opportunistic real estate for over 15 years, and we have a demonstrated ability to source, manage, and most importantly, monetize through various market cycles. Real estate generally performs better in high inflationary environment, and we've seen this resilience through downturns. Additionally, you saw previously we have a lot of people on the ground and so we have a broad channel of sourcing capabilities and value creation strategies. And it really allows us to be selectful, uh, or selective and curate a well-balanced and diversified portfolio. Opportunistic real estate strategy has been consistent for the last 15 years. We believe the best way to invest is in high quality assets uh, with active business plans where we can add value. A rising interest rate environment should create broad levels of distress for owners and operators. We also think that the pool of buyers is narrowing and, and banks are restricting who they end up partnering with. And so this sets a really good backdrop um, for us because we have strong banking relationships, we have access to capital, and so we're gonna capitalize on this dynamic in the market. Very few people predicted that interest rates would rise so dramatically and at the pace they did. And right now, based on what we're seeing, our base case is that we're gonna be in a sustained high interest rate environment. And so when we think about what the ramifications of that are, it's going to be a stressed scenario when people go to refinance. When borrowers go to refinance, there is going to be a significant amount of capital required to deleverage. Um, and those who have capital are going to be able to take advantage of that situation. The second is inflation has been falling, but it does remain elevated. And so that has two impacts to real estate. The first is the cost to build a new building is significantly more expensive. 
And that, as a real estate investor, that is interesting to us because it means supply going forward will remain muted and it sets a very positive backdrop for rental growth. The second is the rental growth itself. In a higher inflationary environment, short duration leased assets like a hotel can push that inflation through. I'm sure you all are frustrated with rising and rising hotel costs, but as owners of, of hotels, we are going to continue to do that as inflation grows and as our costs grow. And you, that, that is something that we are going to continue to see. Some of the other speakers have touched on this, but uh, transaction activity has fallen off a cliff. And it is really hard to know today what the price of assets is because there's been so little transaction activity. And it's led to, and no one wants to be a seller into the unknown. Uh, no one wants to take their assets to market unless they have very strong confidence. And so all we're seeing today is, is high, higher quality assets transacting at okay prices. There's also been this dislocation in the market, in the public and private markets where private market, it's hard to ascertain what the price is, but in public markets, they've fallen dramatically. Despite all of the capital markets uncertainty, our portfolio um, and un operating fundamentals remain very robust. So we see broad-based double-digit rent growth across our portfolio. Occupancy in our offices is very strong. In Korea, our IFC complex is 100% let. If you ask a business owner looking for space, high quality space today, there is none. It, it is a very strong backdrop for investing. We've also seen this in our, in our housing businesses um, where, we've, where we've been able to push this rent growth through. And so that leads us to what, what is actually happening here. We are in a transition from high inflation, high growth um, to a more normalized macro environment. And this wide bid ask spread will persist because there is limited financing available and low transaction volumes. And so um, we're, we'll continue to see limited asset price discovery. And although there are pockets of new supply, as I mentioned, construction starts are well below long-term averages. It's, and that's gonna set up a, a, a very um, healthy real estate market going forward. And we do expect a significant amount of distressed opportunities to arise. Um, due to owners with liquidity requirements. And so we're ready to capitalize on that. And while there's a lot going on in the capital markets, I think other, other groups have touched on this as well. We are looking at key themes that we think uh, have long-term positive trends in the real estate market. The first is demographics and affordability. While these are um, two different themes, they're really intertwined. Populations are urbanizing and getting older. And so we think about how best to invest in that dynamic. Providing affordable housing to people in, in a high rate environment has become a very strong theme. Many young people cannot save enough uh, to make a deposit for a home. And so we're investing heavily in single family rentals, for instance, to, to take uh, into account these trends. Similarly, a lot of R&D is being done to promote longevity. Um, and so we're investing in high quality lab space uh, that provides uh, companies who are trying to do the R&D in that space. The second theme is what we call the new normal. And it's really nothing new. It's really trends that have accelerated through COVID. People are focusing a lot more on experiences and spending on experiences. And so uh, we've been making investments into hospitality and entertainment. Similarly, People are used to convenience. Everyone started shopping online quite substantially. And so investing in urban uh, infill logistics fulfillment centers has been something we've been focused on the last few years and will continue to focus on going forward. And lastly, deglobalization, I would say more, more likely slow globalization, but we are seeing our tenants really changing their supply chains. And what that means is it's new pockets of logistics opening up where we want to invest, but also what they're trying to do is create redundancy in supply chain. So more inventory is carried. And so we're investing uh, more in warehouses in, in, uh, across the globe. To close, I think the comment I want to make is we're really focused on finding the dislocation um, that creates a great entry point for us, but long-term, we're gonna be focused on these trends and how to invest uh, in this market. Thank you very much.